Today we're excited to welcome someone who advocates for healthy personal care products. Carlos Barksdale joins us to talk about founding Luya, a marketplace for the healthiest brands in personal care, beauty, and grooming for black consumers. This is School of Hustle, the show where we find advice and inspiration from people who are making their own way. I'm Shannon, the VP of Social here at GoDaddy, and I live and breathe the hustle of business. Today we're filming from the hustle of it all at the WeWork Times Square in New York City. Everybody, let's give Carlos the biggest, warmest welcome. Yay! Thank you. You founded Luya, a company that finds the healthiest brands and tests the products specifically for the black community. Why is this mission important to you? This mission is important because I feel that black consumers have really been at the back of the bus in the personal care, beauty, and grooming industry for so long. And it's really time for us to have a place where we can go and shop with peace of mind, knowing that we're catered to. And that's what we're doing with Luya by providing a healthy offering of products with your needs that are unique to, your, to you, your skin, your hair, your body, um, and just like your values and, and morals. What does Luya mean and where did the name come from? That's, that's a great question. So when I started the company, actually I didn't have a name at all. I had the idea. So we had a naming workshop in Brooklyn, um, I guess a couple years back. And we were throwing out all kinds of words and phrases that we wanted the name to represent. Like love, care, happiness, joy, a feeling of being home, a feeling of being like catered to and cared for, right? Um, from that workshop came the, the word hallelujah. And from hallelujah, we got luya. Now, obviously it's still different, L-U-Y-A, but that's where, that's where luya comes from. Oh. What criteria do you look for? Um, and what is your process? So when it comes to finding brands to work with, essentially, I look for two main things. One are healthy products that are effective, and two is great branding. Um, now, the way I find these products traditionally is either product fairs and trade shows or on social media. As a matter of fact, I would say Instagram is probably my biggest channel for partner acquisition and identifying new brands. And uh, once that process happens of me finding a brand that I like, I'll reach out to them I'll have a conversation with the founder or the head of partnerships, learn more about their brand, their values, what they're about, why they were founded. I'll tell them about Luya and about what we represent, what, what my vision is. And if there's synergy there, if, if there is, you know, uh, some like-mindedness and we could explore a partnership, typically what happens after that point, after that conversation is they will send us products, we'll test it, we'll hand it out to our community, get feedback, and we'll essentially pick the top choices or the best choices that match our product offering, our landscape, and offer those on our site. And you have products with you today. I do. Do you want to share anything? Sure, I can share some. We have three brands here, Plant Apothecary, Trinity Hills, and Corrosia. So these are some of our, of our favorite products. This is a Corrosia Shea Butter right here, infused with lavender. It's actually produced in East Africa. Um, very soft to the touch, great for your skin. And again, just a natural, high quality product. One of our fan favorites, one of our customer favorites. So I brought these for you and for the team, whoever wants some, whoever can take some. Feel free to try them, to share them. Um, also, this is uh, the Trinity Hills Shampoo Bar. A lot of people use shampoo as a liquid form, yeah. as, as usual. But um, I personally prefer the shampoo bar because it doesn't slip out of my hand when I when I use it. I don't drop it, it doesn't drip out. It fall on your foot. It doesn't fall on my foot. <laughs> Um, and I can easily rub it against my scalp, or some guys use it for their beard, so it's easy to use, very easy to apply, um, and it's a different, a different approach to shampooing, which I really love. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. How did you become interested in this space? So a few years ago, I grew my hair out. As you can see right now, my hair is short, I have yeah. waves. I've had waves for the majority of my life, but a few years ago, I grew my hair out, and I realized in growing my hair out that I didn't know how to take care of my hair. So I started getting tips and information from my friends, mostly my female friends, about how to take care of my hair, right? As far as what process should I use? What is shampooing about? Um, what is conditioning more so about? How often should I shampoo? How often should I condition? And of course, like, what products should I use? And if, over the course of this time, I was asking questions to friends for months at a time, like up to, I would say, about eight months. And I was getting all kinds of recommendations. And finally, after some time, I got to a point where I was pretty comfortable with what I had you know, heard and what I was buying. I had my regimen and I was in my room one day. 
I was looking at my products and just, uh, you know, just observing them. And I picked up a bottle and I turned it around and I read the label. And I was like, what the heck is this? I couldn't pronounce anything. I didn't know what any of the ingredients were. You needed a chemical engineering, engineering degree to, to, to pronounce anything. And I thought to myself, you know, this, this can't be healthy for me. And sure enough, I did five minutes of research and I found tons of articles and research papers that link black hair and skin products to skin irritation, to hair loss, and to just straight up severe illness. And I thought that there's no way that it should be this way for our community, you know. For one, it's hard for me to find information about what I need. And then when I find what I think that I need, it's not feeding me the way that it should be. Um, and so that's what kind of sparked the idea for Luya, the pattern that trust place to go to, to shop, to buy, to purchase with peace of mind. Why is it important for Luya to exist? It's important to exist because black people deserve a trusted place for healthy personal care, beauty and grooming products, right? Very simply. And for me, I think that I'm a super consumer. So before I buy a product, I'm gonna look at the product. I am going to look at custom reviews. I'm gonna go and find videos. I might research the founders. I might research the brand itself. I, I go through links, but not everyone has time for that. And I realize this, right? Like, not everyone's gonna do that. So, you know, what Luya does is we do the work for you. We find the best brands, we test our products, and we offer, the, you know, the, the best options. So we take all their hard work away from the consumers so you can come and shop with peace of mind knowing that whatever you buy is gonna be healthy, it's gonna feed your, your skin, your hair, and your body. Um, we just make it as easy as possible. So, you know, it's, it's taking black consumers from the back of the bus and putting them at the forefront of the industry. How can Luya change the culture of consuming personal care products? I would say by curating seamless access to passive consumption. And by that, I mean, when it comes to consuming personal care products, especially in our community, we're really grandfather or grandmother into what we use, right? Okay. So essentially, you know, we use whatever our moms or our grandmothers gave us, especially in the black community. And we shop at corner stores and supply, beauty supply stores in our neighborhoods, right? And so we just buy what's there because that's all that we know. Now, if we replace those secondhand or second-rate beauty stores with Luya shops, then all of a sudden, our moms and grandmothers and we are buying Luya's products. And now using healthy and natural products isn't a reach or a stretch, it's convention. It's what we know, it's what we use, it's what we grew up doing. So it becomes this thing where we have to adapt to to become a part of our everyday lives. It's what we grew up with and now it's a part of our culture. What kind of feedback are you getting on your business? Yeah. Are there any inspirational stories from customers? Feedback has been really positive. I think um, our consumers love our products once they get their hands on it because I truly believe that we curate the best brands out there. And when consumers can buy it and get their hands on it, they, they, they discover that. Uh, I think a story that stands out for me is I had a dad reach out and was like, hey, we love your products, they're amazing. I buy them for myself, I buy them for my wife, and I buy them for my kids. And that to me is amazing because it's hard to get just one person to change their consumer habits much less to, to change the consumer habits of an entire family. So when we talk about changing the culture and changing consumption, that's a real you know, change in a family, in an individual, in a neighborhood, and eventually in the community. What is your favorite inspirational story from a customer? So this is gonna sound cheesy, but it's actually my mom. My mom is probably one of my biggest consumers um, of Blue Year's products. And it's not because she just wants to support me, I promise. My parents are actually pretty frugal. So my mom buys the products because like, she's like, no, this, this, these are some of the best products that I've used. These serve me, these are, they make me feel better, right? Um, so the fact that I can have the impact in my, own, in my own home with my own family from something that I created is really powerful. Well, now we are going to play a game that we call Hustle Time. Cool. Time it takes you to get ready in the morning. 20 minutes. Favorite kid from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Charlie? Most powerful emotion, anger, or love? Love. Who is the most successful person you know? My mom. Meatballs or fish? Fish. First record you bought with your own money? Bow Wow. Favorite Disney movie? Ooh, Tarzan. Favorite movie? Uh, Forrest Gump. What is your favorite word? Hustle. 
Willy Wonka, Gene Wilder, or Johnny Depp? Neither. Biggest splurge? Myself. Sour candy or sweet candy? Uh, sweet. Karaoke is about talent or commitment? Commitment. Wine, white or red? Neither. Peanut butter, cups or M&Ms? Neither. Would you rather have more time or more money? Time. Favorite breakfast food? Smoothie. Rather give up for life, pizza or sandwiches? Sandwiches. Would you rather never be able to teach or mentor or never be able to learn? Never be able to teach or mentor. Would you, if you had one thing to eat for the rest of your life and it was for breakfast, what would it be? Smoothies. What kind of smoothies? <laughs> Perfect. That was good. That was good. Okay. Oh, man. We got one, 17, 18, 19, 20. Let's go. Favorite part of your day? Looking in the mirror. I think as an entrepreneur, um, it can be kind of lonely and daunting. So looking in the mirror in the morning is a reminder that I always have myself. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Best piece of advice you've ever gotten? To not care what people think. So okay. growing up, my, my grandmother always told me that people are going to talk about you if you do good, and people are going to talk about you if you do bad. So you might as well do what you want to do. Worst piece of advice? Um, to be realistic. Uh, being re re realistic like, never gets anyone anywhere. How do you use your career to inspire others? Um, hopefully just to inspire them to put themselves first, put their passions first, and to work unapologetically. Ever felt like walking away? No, I only feel like figuring it out. One thing you still need to learn? Patience, something I work on. What do you want people to learn from you? I want people to learn to put themselves first and their desires and their passions, um, and to just be unapologetic in serving themselves. What's next for you? What's next is I'm going to uh, create a, a subscription box for Luya so that consumers can get their products monthly or bi-monthly with their favorite brands. We're going to tap into, into travel with products as well. And I'm also launching a dedicated line of healthy products for 360 waivers. So starting with the pomade paste. And yeah, the waving community has been at the background of the background of the background for a while. And I've been developing some formulas and uh, some ideas for us. And it's gonna be, I'm excited. The brand is called Swimming, by the way, Swimming. Wow, that's great. Um, who inspires you? Um, I would say Master P and Dame Dash. Who challenges you? My uncle Nate and my older fraternity brother, Dave Lalade. The next uh, set of advice here is for our entrepreneurial hug. Okay. Here he comes. All right. What's going on, puppy? Oh, that's <laughs> Aww. Noodle is inspired by Luya and wants to create a similar business for his community of hugs like himself. He's a bit overwhelmed by all of the research and the nuances that go into starting a business. What are some key things Noodle should know before embarking, pun intended, on the entrepreneurial journey? You know, I would say um, don't overthink it. You know, don't overthink it. Just kind of jump in um, and do what you can. I think for so many people, they're concerned about, uh, you know, what they can't do or don't know how to do. But if you just start somewhere, um, I think you'll figure it out. It'll figure out itself. Just leave with passion, um, leave with purpose. And if you leave with passion and purpose, then who you need and what you need will kind of fall into place very naturally. You'll see it over time. Um, and just always be proactive about communication, your ideal out there, talking to your customers, your target customers, um, talking to people who could be potentially partners down the road, and just, again, leading with passion and persistence. All right, you know you got that? Well. We, we always like to end School of Hustle with a final thought. Okay. And so I am going to share three quotes with you and ask you to tell me which quote resonates the most with you and why. Okay. okay? Number one, it's better to fail in originality than to succeed in imitation. Number two, don't let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. Mm -hmm. Three, a goal is not always meant to be reached. It often serves as something to aim for. Okay. Um, I think number two resonates the most. Okay. But well, before I say why, I want to say why number one and number three don't identify, oh, I don't identify yes, with. Please. Yeah. Yeah. So um, number one was... It's better to fail in originality than to succeed in imitation. Yeah. I mean, I think 
Most companies that exist are imitations of previous companies or previous ideas. Um, originality is, there's something to be said for it, but it's, it's, it's very few and far between. If you can take an idea or something that's out there in the market and improve upon it and make money and, and be successful, do it. You know, that's all that's ever happened for the most part. Um, so there is no shame in like improving upon what already exists. Uh, for number three, uh, as far as having a goal and it being, I guess, you know, something to reach for, I think that's something that's going to be figured out in the process of entrepreneurship. So, you know, it, it's just going to happen. But for number two, don't let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. This resonates a lot because it boils down to the statement of don't make excuses, right? Um, a toddler can't ride a bike initially, but they can mount it. A teenager can't drive a car, but she can sit in a driver's seat. A man doesn't know how to be a husband, but he can go and buy a ring, right? So what's that first step that you can do to kind of get to where you want to be? If you take that approach, I think you'll be successful. Nicely said. Thank you. It was such a pleasure talking to you today. <laughs> Thank you. I, I really, really enjoyed having you open up and tell us about your business. Thank you. And, you. and you have a great background. I love what you're doing. For sure. So for Luya, we are www.luya.care. Um, so it's .care, not .com. And Luya is spelled L-U-Y-A. We're also at Luya.care on Instagram. For the new brand Swimming, which is spelled W-W-S, sorry, S-W-M-N. That is WeSwimming.com. So we, S-W-M-N.com and also we swimming on Instagram. Well, I know that everybody enjoyed today's conversation as much as I did. And for everybody watching, follow this man and follow GoDaddy too, because every week we are bringing fabulous inspiration entrepreneurs and uh, there's so many more conversations to be had. So follow and we'll see y'all soon. Thanks. Mm -hmm.